new album is called Destination Paradise. Um, it was released on the 8th of the 8th 08. And um, it's really a, a culmination of um, my journey, my musical journey. And really, um, if I was to want to leave a piece of work on this planet to represent my philosophies and my, my experiences, it would be Destination Paradise. That's beautiful. So there's um, there's some good songs on it on your on your MySpace page, yes. and um, the uh, the one song I heard the first one was uh, "Keep on Moving." I yes. believe is the name of that. It's very um, yeah, it's reggaeton dance hall style uh, on that. Yeah, um, which is unusual for me, really. But um, I I um, was kind of inspired by some young people that you know I was working with at the time, and the youngest person that was around me at the time was a, a young girl called Jaden. Z Johnson and she was four years old and it's her voice that you hear at oh, the beginning cool. of the song saying knock knock because okay. she's always saying knock knock jokes with okay. me you know so I thought I would feature on the record and, and do something kind of modern but still uplifting and positive lyrically yeah. you know and, and it's, it, the song's going over well we've put it in a set now and people seem to really love the track um, another track on the album that I really love is Heal This World you know with um, um, I Levi um, who's performing tonight from Rising Sun and Coot Dog from the Mr. Crutes band that they both collaborated with me on that song and that's a very strong song dealing with ecological, social, political issues you know, global issues right now but in a very uplifting way also. Just like another, an, another different kind of stylistic change that you have is the, uh, is the song Christ on Religion which yes. has some very interesting and poignant and timely uh, delves into philosophy and religion. Yes. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, I, I um, at the same time I was doing Destination Paradise, I was also putting together a project called The Words of Christ. Um, a few years ago I came across this revelation called the Urantia Book. And um, I, I always had certain questions, you know, um, about the history of this universe cosmology, the history of this planet, and a lot of parts in the scriptures um, that I would see there were certain gaps in. I would always wonder, you know, what happened here, like, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden. Um, I always used to wonder how Cain killed his brother mm -hmm. and then found a wife when in the Bible it says it was just Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. And then Cain went to the land of Nod, found a wife and built a city. And um, so I always felt in my heart and soul that there was two versions of creation. There was a, to me, there was an evolutionary story and there was also a spiritual injection story, um, almost a visitation mm -hmm. story that went on. And I used to ask questions for years and when I found this book, every single question, you know, I had a lot of questions. And I have to honestly say, every single question was answered for me. And the, the last quarter of the book talks about the life of Christ. And in the Bible, you know, there's big gaps in Christ's life. He was born, then he was 10, then he was a teenager, then he was a grown man. All right, 30. And in the Urantia book, it talks about every single year of his life. Oh, cool. It even talks about Christ before he was born. Okay. And then it talks about what he did after he left our planet. So oh, cool. there's a lot of very cool information gotcha. okay. that's never been available before. Right. But beyond all of that, what was most intriguing to me was the things that Christ said. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to capture that without any of the, you know, paintings around what he said. Right. But just what did he say? And, and I truly believe that what he said was universal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't belong to any religion, not even Christianity. Right. It belongs to every human being on this planet who recognizes that they're a child of God. Right. And it's really just some comforting messages to help us recognize our divinity while we are still living within a realm of humanity. Well, cool. Yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot of points that were really, I felt were really important, like where you, where you say, don't just quote the prophets of the past, make your own prophecies, be That's your right. own Prophet. servant of, yeah. of the spirit, of That's the spirit. Right. And it was the difference between the spirit and the authoritarian right. uh, type of state that is placed upon religion as a method of control, yes. controlling the masses. And, and one, thing I've, one thing I've noticed in my journey on this planet is that sometimes the masses 
want to be controlled. There you go. Sometimes yeah. they want to be led. Yeah. They don't want to take responsibility for their destiny. Exactly. Uh, because the spiritual path is a lonely path. When it it's is, lived yeah. to its it highest is. level, yeah, yeah. it's very lonely. Right. And for every person that exists, there is a, a another path. Right. You know, no two paths are the same. Because the spiritual influence I get might influ it may be the same influence but how I perceive it and how you perceive it determines what our path is. Um, and that's why we have so many denominations and so many different religious creeds because different leaders who become individually motivated mm -hmm. take it, are inspired in their own way and make it theirs and then attract a lot of people who want to be led right. to what they believe is the truth. Right. And, and like we were saying earlier, you know, don't allow, don't always just quote the scriptures, don't always just follow religious teachers or priests, you know, become one yourself, exactly. you know, let open up yourself to the spirit, experience what it is your religious leader is experiences yeah. by the same level of commitment and dedication to truth. And you will also receive guidance, enlightenment, prophecies, you know, it's available for everybody, you exactly, know. And, exactly. And, and to me, as an as a artist, that's what I am trying my best to do, is empower the people through my music exactly. and through my performances to go out there and be all that you can be. Well, we definitely see that in your performances. You're one of the best performers who comes through town. We always catch you whenever you're through, and nice. it's just always a high-energy <laughs> show. And we're looking forward to tonight. Pato Bantan, Santa Barbara, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, bro. Man.